All right. Hey, this is Kevin Devani, the Total Connector. I'm the host of the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. Um, really excited to have Lixin Liu, the creator of the air-gapped hardware wallet Cobo Vault. Uh, check, check them out on, uh, on the website. Going to put those in the show notes afterwards. Let me know your questions afterwards and whether you, you loved it as much as I did. And um, yeah, it's about, you know, uh, security again. Uh, see, a lot of security questions, especially I got a, a whole list of questions from Stepan Siginiev, one of the, uh, you know, leading uh, product developers and security experts um, in my eyes. And uh, yeah, um, so we're going to really dive into uh, um, the, the intricacies, the details, uh, the, the features, the, the, the potential improvements that could be made. And but I already know that uh, Kobo or Kobo Vault uh, hardware wallet has the potential to become one of the best hardware wallets in the space. Uh, so uh, and they're really open to constructive criticism from the community. So they're building it together with the community. Uh, whatever improvements need to be done. So yeah, without further ado, this is my talk with Lixon Liu, the creator of um, the air gapped hardware wallet Kobo Vault. Yeah, real life. Lixin Liu, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, Keva. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Lixin, you're the creator of the uh, so-called air-gapped um, hardware wallet, Bitcoin hardware wallet, as I want to call it, um, Cobo Vault, or you have other you know categories of products, but uh, just stick to Cobo Vault that, because that's the one I, I you know I unpacked, I tested. Unfortunately, Lixin, yeah. I don't have it with me right now, so I can't really show mm -hmm. it. But you know, no problem. We, I can just you know uh, uh, show it in yeah. the background. Um, Lixin, yeah, it's okay. You guys mm -hmm. can check my background. Exactly. Yeah. So, Lixin, uh, do you want to like for my uh, listeners and or viewers on YouTube um, give a little bit of background story about? Uh, you know, how'd you get uh, to be becoming, you know, the, the creator uh, of the Cobo Vault hardware wallet, the whole idea behind it, what's the ethos, the mission? Yeah, uh, so uh, maybe let me talk about my background and how I get into this product and how I get into the journey of making this product for the community. Um, maybe uh, let's start from the very beginning. Uh, the first time I knew Bitcoin was back in 2009 when I was in my college. So uh, I spent a lot of time on internet. Uh, at that time, uh, late 2009, I was uh, it was my like job job hunting season. So I spent a lot of time on internet, and uh, I think around the Christmas of 2009, I came I came across Bitcoin. So at that time, uh, I found it really really interesting. Uh, but I, I just think it's kind of cool, but I'm not sure the consensus will be reached for Bitcoin. So <clears throat> at that time, I didn't join this revolution. And then the time, time moves on. Then it comes to around 2013. At that time, I, I was running a startup in Shanghai. So I have a partner uh, who was from Stanford University. So he was very... Um, connected to the very high tech and the cutting edge stuff. So he reminded me again, he reminded me again for Bitcoin. So at the time I, I came into Bitcoin again, and then that's the first time I bought my Bitcoin on Mongox. Yeah, so that's my first uh, like uh, crossroad with Bitcoin. Uh, and then for the past the seven, uh, I think past the six to seven years, I was making work for uh, creating hardware so my previous company was a very famous company in China. We were making drones, but it's not DJI, but we're like the second largest in the world currently to make drones. Uh, and uh, I was the second employee there. So I came into the hardware journey and uh, I was experienced with the whole like product concepting, I mean, product ideation and product design and product development and also product manufacturing. And uh, luckily for my previous company, we also uh, sell the product worldwide. So uh, I have some experience in global marketing, uh, but I left that company after they got the, they got an investment from Snapchat. Uh, you must know Snapchat, right? It's mm -hmm. a social media company. So they got invested from that company. So I left that. And then I joined Kobo. So Kobo was a 
uh, Kobo is a very famous wallet company. We we call we call ourselves like a full stack wallet company in China. Uh, it is funded by uh, two founders. One of those is also the co-founder of F2 Pool, which is the largest uh, Bitcoin mining pool currently in the world. Uh, the other guy uh, was Zhang Changhao. So he was an early employee of Facebook. So these two guys discussed Fish and Zhang Changhao. They founded Kobo. And at that time, they found that uh, there is a very good opportunity for hardware. So uh, they came to me. Actually, they, uh, I was introduced by their investor. So uh, we set up a, a subordinate company here in Shanghai, focused on just hardware. So they are making software wallet, which is custodial wallet. And also they are making enterprise wallet, just like BitGo. So I'm here in Shanghai. I'm, I'm fully on the Kobo Vault product line and working on the hardware product line. So uh, that's basic my, basically my background and uh, how I get into the hardware wallet uh, area and how we make the product. Yeah. Amazing story. So, uh, Lixin, so when you when you started uh, thinking about, uh, you know, designing, developing this uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, air gap hardware wallet, did you like go through like trial and errors? Like, did you look at other hardware wallets you, and you, you know, you saw like the, the maybe, um, you know, deficits, <clears throat> okay. flaws or any kind of okay. inefficiencies or whatever. And then, you know, you wanted to do something better. Or what was the, what's the story behind it? Okay. Mm, actually, uh... Uh, the product currently you guys see, uh, which is Cobalt Vault Essential and Cobalt Vault Pro, these two products are our second generation Cobalt Vault. And uh, the first generation is the Cobalt Vault Ultimate. And uh, sorry, I'm losing you, I think. Oh, no, don't worry. I'm just, uh, sc I'm just screen sharing the, your, your website, cobalt.com uh, okay. slash hardware wallet, okay. Cobalt Vault. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, currently, I cannot see it. Maybe I just move on. So we have uh, currently we have three products on shelf, uh, and the Cobalt Vault Ultimate is our first generation. Uh, when we designed that generation, because uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of the founder of Cobalt is also the founder of F2 Pool. So we did a lot of we did we did a lot of research based on the. Uh, the user case for the miners here in China. So, and for the miners, uh, first, they are extremely uh, hardcore for security. When I talk to them, the first thing they mention for other hardware products, hardware wallet products, they mention that I, I don't feel safe when I like plug my hardware wallet into my laptop because I feel safe when I'm not using it because no one can getting get get to the information in the hardware wallet but i feel extremely unsafe when i plug it into a computer so that's the first thing we did for the first generation hardware wallet which is you can see from the picture here it's a qr code air gapped so which means like which means when you are communication when you are doing when you are sending your unsigned transaction from your uh, online companion wallet app to your code storage it, it the message is sent through qr code so you don't need to worry about everything's transparent and everything's verifiable and that's why we see verifiably air gapped which means you can verify all the information getting into your cobalt vault and getting out of cobalt vault that's really important for the miners because they are they have like, tens or hundreds or thousands of Bitcoins. So they really care the interaction here. That's the first thing we do for the first generation. Uh, and also because they, uh, they also need secure element, which is a uh, very strong protection against the side channel attack. So they are worried that because they have, they have so many Bitcoins. So they are afraid that somebody stole their hardware wallet and try to extract the information. So the second most important thing for the first generation is the secure element. And the, the third thing uh, we did, uh, you can see here, uh, you can see here, we have detachable battery. This is also a very interesting insight from the miners because in early days, the miners 
I'm not sure I'm telling this story too long because when I'm talking my product, I always like mad. No, go ahead. I think that's forward. important to, to understand the background. Yeah. That, that's what really interests me yeah. also, you know. Yeah, because okay. we're going to go into also, the details of the technicalities because I'm not a security yeah. expert. And But, you know, yeah. I talked to Stepan Stignerev and by the way, he, ha he gave you a great feedback okay. and he applauded really your approach to this whole thing like being open-minded to you. criticism and, and constructive feedback from the community and you you really want to yes. you know uh, build up this this product but anyway i'm sorry i didn't want to okay. interrupt you go ahead and we'll, we'll go into detail oh. later on okay for the i just mentioned the qr code air gap and the secure element and also the third thing you can see here is the detachable battery uh in the first generation of product because i talked to a lot of miners and they told me a very interesting story which is in the early days, how do they store their, how do they long-term hodl their Bitcoin? So the very interesting part is they all buy a modular LG mobile phone. So that mobile phone is modular because the battery can be taken out. Because when they put the mobile phone in a safe box or in a deposit box in the bank, they always worry that the battery corrosion will destroy that product which will bring their a lot of trouble for them so in the early days they they all buy that lg uh, modular smartphone and then they buy a bunch of batteries and they put them they put the modular phone and a bunch of batteries together into the safe box mm -hmm. and when they want to use that the battery they just pick one functional battery and plug in and then they can use the mobile phone as their cold storage it's the early day story here in china so i took that insight so i uh, for the first generation of couple vaults we also made the uh the detachable battery which is really important for the hardlers uh and also uh the fourth thing which is really important for couple vault automate which is first generation is that we did waterproof and the drop resistant so we did that because uh most miners they work in the most isolated places in China for cheapest electricity. So in those areas like Sichuan, like Xinjiang, they're extreme, uh, they're extreme environment. So they worry about if uh, the heavy rain will destroy their hardware wallet, this kind of stuff. So for our first generation, it's waterproof and it comes with a uh, aluminum um, box to protect the product from like heavy drop or something. And also uh, some uh, some like uh, big guys in the community also drove their car over our first generation. So it also survives. It's really interesting on YouTube. You can find that video actually. Um, but uh, when we were trying to design our, but our first generation, one biggest shortcoming for our first generation was that it, it was too expensive it's almost 500 bucks so in 2019 uh for the bitcoin uh 2019 i went to san francisco so i talked to a lot of bitcoiners there i asked them one question uh do you care i asked them one interesting question is that uh do you worry about your home got flooded and your hardware wallet got destroyed <laughs> they said, I'm worried. They said, I'm worried, but that's not a big possibility for me. They are not like miners. Miners, there is a high possibility for them to get their hardware, hardware wallet into a wet scenario or into water. But for normal hardware, they don't care about that. They said, it's only a hundred bucks. If that happens, I just spend another hundred bucks to buy another one. Actually, that answer triggers me to make a product which is not waterproof and not drop resistant and try to lower the price. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the second generation, which is Cobalt Vault Essential and Cobalt Vault Pro, we took the legacy from the first generation, which is QR code air gap and the secure element. And also we have detachable battery. And also we got some feedback for the generation, which is um, some of our user, they are their rechargeable battery, which is the Ethereum battery, was uh, broken if they don't charge it often. So for the second generation, we also can, you can see here, there's a battery case, which comes, you can use, you can put four AAA batteries into the battery case to turn on your couple volt. So 
if you are a long-term hardler and you don't touch your hardware wallet maybe uh, several months, once several months, you can use this AAA battery to turn it on if the rechargeable battery is not functional. So, and also for the second generation, we turn this into essential version, which is for long-term hardware. So it doesn't come with the detachable battery. And also there's another version called Pro version. Pro version has the detachable battery and also the, the fingerprint sensor so that you can authorize a transaction with your fingerprint. But the fingerprint is more of a uh, convenient feature rather than a security feature because your fingerprint is easier to get replicate. So we suggest a user, you can use the Cobalt Vault Pro on the go, which is easier, but don't put, don't put too much money into that if you uh, turn on the fingerprint uh, feature. Yeah, that's mainly the second generation. And also for the second generation, we make a big step for open source. We open source the firmware of the secure element. And also we open source, we open source as much as possible, as much as we can do. Uh, and also we open source the firmware of the secure element. That's also another big step we made for the second generation. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, now that you uh, mentioned open source already, let me just ask you because mm -hmm. I've talking to Stepan Stiger. Uh, so, is, yeah. is let me let me ask you that differently. Is there anything that is not mm -hmm. open source, or what are, are there any parts of it like that is not open source or not fully open sourced? Um... Okay. Okay. So uh, the first open the first uh, I think the most important part which is not open source, but it's not, we're not willing to open source. It's, it's we're not allowed to open source is the design of the secure element. And uh, the base, you can take that as some base code of the secure element because the design of the secure element and also the base code of the secure element is the IP of the secure element vendor. But the firmware of the secure element is written by us so that we can open source that part. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah. Let's go th uh, in consecutive order. Let me let me just because unfortunately, again, I'm at my girlfriend's house. I didn't take the I already unpacked it. I tested it. It's it's great. You know, use experience. Uh, it was pretty good. Okay. Let's let just have a few details that, that I noticed. Mm -hmm. um, um, again, I made the picture uh, once I unpacked it. Let me let me just see if I can find it right here. Yeah. Uh, can you see this? Mm -hmm. So there is a, so this is the, the Cobo Vault, right? Uh, it's, you know, freshly unpacked, just, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> during, during the uh, sun, sun daylight. Um, so I took a picture and there's this sort of a, a security manual and product list, a quick guide uh, paper, right? And the thing is, uh, I think it's part of the authentication process or pairing process. Or yes. anything. Now, yes. I don't have the picture from inside this manual, but when you open it, there is an instruction that says, um, and maybe, you know, you can just uh, guide my viewers or listeners through this process, you know, generally, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we don't do, we don't need to do a tutorial. There's enough, uh, you know, uh, videos out there on YouTube, but uh, when you open that manual, it says somewhere, uh, scan, because there's a QR code inside that manual. And it says, uh, you know, uh, pair it or scan the QR code below. And I thought, okay, you know, so like I, you know, I, um, I paired it with that QR code inside that manual, but it didn't work. And then I figured out, okay. oh, there's another way you can just go on this web authentication page from your website. And, yes. uh, and this is what I did eventually, you know, I, uh, where is it? Um, okay. there's somewhere in the user guides, uh, over there. Mm -hmm. Uh, or in the web authentication, uh, here you go. Uh, there you can sort of pay, uh, pair your um, uh, once you upload, once you download and install the Kobo app, you can then uh, uh, scan the QR code or pair pair it with the QR code that is given on this site on this web authentication site. Can you go like mm -hmm. uh, guide a little bit my my listeners like through this process? How, how does okay. it work? W what's the reasoning behind it? And what okay. and could there I be a mistake maybe in the manual because there's a QR code in the manual which does not work. So I thought maybe it was just okay. a mistake or whatever. Okay, uh, here I think there I think it's our bad that we didn't express very well. 
because here there are different QR codes and there are uh, different uh, usage or different user scenario for these QR codes. Uh, the first QR code you mentioned is the QR code on the user menu. Actually, that QR code is not uh, scanned with your Cobalt Vault. Cobalt Vault cannot recognize this QR code. This QR code should be scanned with your mobile phone. So you are, with scanning that QR code, you are jumping to Apple Store. You are jumping to App Store so that mm -hmm. you can download your Cobalt Vault companion app. So that QR code on the menu is for your mobile phone to scan. And uh, I'm, uh, I may extend a little bit here about the companion app because your Cobalt Vault is totally air gap. You cannot get information from the blockchain uh, from the mainnet. So you need a companion app to get your balance and get other information and also help you to broadcast the transaction. Just like the companion app is just like Ledger Live. So you need a companion app on your mobile phone. So that QR code is for your companion app. And uh, for the web authentication, for that process, uh, for that QR code, it's not scanned by your mobile phone, but it's scanned by your Cobalt Vault. Uh, here is uh, for the web authentication process, that is to prevent supply chain attack. Mm -hmm. Because you know, I know other hardware wallets, they have mechanics, uh, they have mechanisms like uh, anti-tempering sticker, this kind of stuff to prevent supply chain attack. And we also have that. But if you dig more, if you dig more into that temper-proof sticker, actually it's very easy to be uh, manipulated by the hacker. So you can use a uh, heat gun to heat it and then you can remove it with no trace. So that's not a very strong protection against the supply chain attack. And for supply chain attack, for example, what it usually do is like people can, a hacker can replace your hardware wallet and uh, it shows definitely the same from the form factor. But the hacker cannot change or they cannot tamper with is the secure element, which is most the secure part of your hardware wallet. So what we do for web authentication, you can take this as, uh, this is your, sorry, uh, it's my mobile phone, but for example, this is your Cobalt Vault. And uh, you also, uh, at the back end of the web, web authentication, it is the uh, Amazon Amazon Cloud, which is AWS, HSM, 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 you can take that as a highly secure back backend, which is run by Amazon. So you can take that as we put a private key, we put a pair of private key and public key in your secure element, in our secure element. And also we put this, we put another pair of private and the public key in the HSM of Amazon cloud, which is AWS. So they do a verification process to make sure that your secure element is working properly. So mm -hmm. which means your hardware wallet is genuine from the manufacturer rather than replaced by a hacker in your uh, supply chain process. So that's very, that's very important for uh, preventing supply chain attack. So actually, uh, I know that Ledger, actually they do the same thing, but uh, you, don't, you don't feel that because uh, they do that thing once you plug your Ledger into your laptop. So here we are doing this manually because we wanna show people what the device is doing, what information is getting to the device, this kind of thing. And also for the web authentication, we have an article fully explain the logic of the web authentication. And I can share that article to you. Maybe you can put it in the description and people can check this later. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And I just yeah. uh, screen shared the, the instructional guide uh, from your page mm -hmm. about the web authentication mm -hmm. process. So the way it yeah. works, right, you just you, you scan that that QR code and then you and then you sort of you you type in the, the the code that is given to you on your on your hardware uh, Cobalt Vault device as yes. as a confirmation yes. that this is sort of it matches exactly 100% to that QR code or something right it's sort of an yes. air gap verification yeah. process right okay. yes yes okay great 
So yeah, so like Sin, let's go. Yeah, let's go a little bit deeper if you want. Um, now um, I've, I've, I sent you the the list of questions because you know yeah, I put my questions you know just as a from a layman's perspective or non technical perspective. Um, now uh, the questions I I wrote for myself, um, not talking about Stefan Snigirev's uh, questions. How can the uh, I think you you answered all that uh, some of the questions already partially. Uh, how can the average user be 100% sure that the web authentication process uh, that the Cobo Vault, you know, is is providing is correct and reliable? So there's no way, uh, there's any any way of interference or manipulation, right? So this is what what's uh, what you came up with, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, actually, the the most uh, the most dangerous part, the most uh, even for us, we cannot manipulate that part because uh, if you guys dive into the HSM, the mechanism of the HSM of the AWS, you will find that even as us as the manufacturer, we cannot get the private key out of the HSM. That's very interesting. So even for us, we don't know. Uh, they For the HSM, it can only give us the, the public key, but for us, we don't get the private key which means even for us, we cannot change the whole process. We cannot manipulate the process here. And we are relying on H AWS HSM here. Yeah. So uh, for people, you don't need to worry about that because even the engineer in our team, we cannot manipulate this process. Okay, gotcha. So uh, before I forget, before I forget to mention, I uh, I thought I'm I'm, I, I'm gonna have like a Bitcoin only wallet, but it was no problem. You know, I went into it on your website and followed the instructions. I downloaded the Bitcoin only firmware, and then you know I had the Bitcoin only firmware on the, on the device. So are you already producing or delivering the Bitcoin only wallet, or do do the users have to? A download like like a Trezor, you know the, the Trezor is the same thing. You have to download and install yeah. the the Bitcoin only firmware on it. Yeah, uh, actually, uh, people have to download the, the Bitcoin firmware from the website and uh, update the product. And we are not directly delivering a Bitcoin only version hardware to the customer. Uh, here, the reason is uh, actually the reason is quite simple. If we do another hardware version, and then we it's it's also because we are in our early stage for the second generation. If if long term run if we run it long term and we have a more accurate estimation for how many people need the Bitcoin ver only version and how many people need the multi -coin, multi coin version, if we have that accurate estimation, we can easily do this as separate hardware. But currently, because we are in, I hope you guys can understand this. We are in the early understand early stage. Yeah. So we don't have a very accurate estimation. If we do the separate version, it will, it may mess around our manufacturing. For example, uh, we don't know how fast the Bitcoin only version will go. So maybe we need to, we need, we need to mess around with the manufacturing side. So that's purely from uh, supply chain management side decision. It's yeah, not understandable. From, yeah, but it's on your roadmap. I mean, you know, it's 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 on your roadmap to to some sometime somewhere deliver this right yeah. okay good mm -hmm. okay let me go to my other questions i hope i'm not gonna repeat my questions from uh, uh which have you already maybe partially answered already how can the user know that the original mm -hmm. hardware has not been tampered or manipulated with in the pre-production phase you answered that already what does air gapped uh -huh. what does the word air gapped mean for really for the normal you know, oh, uh, average uh, user in the context and comparison to other hardware wallets in terms of enhanced security. Okay, uh, actually, for our pre-production side, I also can, I also can mention another thing, uh, which is um, inside our team. Actually, uh, the the firmware of the secure element is uh, we call it burned. We burn the firmware into the secure element by ourselves. So then the secure element is the trusted root. So it can verify other parts. For example, when you are doing, when you are upgrading your firmware, the, you are upgrading your, the product, upgrading the product, the secure element can verify everything. So we just fully control the secure element side. 
that's all by, I mean, all the, that's the burning process is done by us. And then the secure element verify other parts, for example, firmware upgrade, this kind of thing. So uh, that's how we make sure that firmware is, the secure element is totally trust from our perspective. Great. So great. then we, yeah, yeah, yeah got yeah. it. No, great, uh, wonderful, beautiful. Um, um, yeah, the other question I had is like, what are the potential risks? What would be the potential risk uh, when using the Kobo app, uh, the Kobo app on mobile together, you know, with the Kobo mm -hmm. Vault? I mean, because it's a, sort of a, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, um, actually, uh, this is a um, current, we, we may change it later. But currently, the problem is we know the uh, XPOP of the user. So Ledger and the Trezor, they have the same problem. So it will hurt users' privacy. So I mean, we will record your XPOP. So we know that uh, how much Bitcoin you have. Uh, the way to avoid this, also uh, Ledger and the Trezor, their way to avoid this is you don't use the Cobalt Vault app because from the software structure wise, because we're doing multi-coin, so it's easier for us to send the XPOP to our server and then we give you the information you need because we're supporting multi-coin on Cobalt Vault app. But if you are a very privacy sensitive guy and if you wanna protect your information, protect your XPOP and everything, you can use the Cobalt Vault with other third party wallets um, for example, you can also use the Cobalt Vault with other wallets and use that wallet to connect to, to your full node. This this kind of thing to maximize your privacy, uh, to 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 maximize the protection of your privacy. Uh, so we just give people options to do that. But long term wise, we will also do this. Currently, our mainly our development resource we're putting on the Cobalt Vault side. So we're trying to make this compatible with a lot of third party wallets to make sure that if you have different needs, for example, multi-signature, all these kind of things are not supported by Cobalt Vault app, but we're trying to make the Cobalt Vault hardware itself compatible with other third party wallets to protect you against the different kinds of, uh, to, to meet different kinds of needs of the user. That's what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that's but that's important point. When you say uh, you can use other wallets, but then you say you know uh, you you're going to work on the wallets that are compatible, uh, or you're going to work on the Cobalt Vault that is compatible with other wallets. Now, uh, yeah. can can you just break it down for for people? Like, uh, what what do you mean? Like, use it with other wallets? How how do you how do they use it with? Other, let's say they have a whatever, a Trezor, a Bitbox, okay. or whatever they have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually. Uh... I, I will jump back to the uh, to the theory of the cold storage and the, your companion app. So you have your uh, you have your hardware wallet, and uh, your hardware wallet is you can take this as your signer. So it only the most important job for the hardware wallet to do is it signs your transaction. So it keeps your private key isolated from the internet and it do the signing work. And uh, the other part is the companion app. The companion app, just like Ledger Live, is connected to the internet. So when you are trying to, if you pair them together, when you are trying to do a transaction, you set up your transaction on your companion app and then turn that into a unsigned transaction and transfer that unsigned transaction to your hardware wallet, which is the signer. So signer do the signing. So then it's signed transaction and then send back to your companion app. And then your companion app can broadcast the transaction to the miners or blockchain or mempool, whatever. So this is mainly what happens when you use a hardware wallet to sign the transaction. And usually for hardware wallets like Trezor and the Ledger, they have their hardware wallet and also they have their companion app. Uh, for Ledger, it's Ledger Live. And for Trezor, it's a web application. Mm -hmm. So uh, you connect them through USB and you do this work. The, the information 
uh, sends and receives from the USB. So this is how does it work normally. So, but if we take this separately, um, if this is a signer and this is a companion app, if they can talk, we if they can talk in a in the same language, it it doesn't matter if this companion app is made by Trezor or something. So just like they're talking in same language, and then the companion app can tell the hardware wallet, oh, I need you to sign this. And hardware wallet, oh, yeah, it's verified. I can sign this and sign this and send back the information. So which means uh, for the hardware wallet, if you buy the hardware wallet, usually if the hardware wallet is legit, you can use it with uh, not their official companion app, but also other third party wallets. For example, maybe uh, you must know Electron and you can use Ledger and Trezor or mm -hmm. Code Card with Electron. And we also can be used with Electron. Uh, and here, another thing I want to mention is uh, PSBT, partially signed Bitcoin transaction. Uh, PSBT, if you, um, for very, very layman's words, it's not, actually it's not right, but for very, very layman's words, one thing PSBT achieve is PSBT defines how the companion app and the, and the hardware wallet, they can talk together. So it defines this. So actually, if your companion app, no matter it's third party or anything, it obeys the rules, which is just defined by PSBT and also the hardware wallet is also obey the protocol or the rules defined by PSBT. And then they can talk in the same language so they can be used together. So PSBT is a very big thing. Uh, what I mentioned is about PSBT single signature. So a hardware wallet can talk to another software wallet as a companion app through PSBT. PSBT can also make different hardware wallet talk together, which means uh, that's called a PSBT multi-signature, which means different hardware wallets can do a multi-signature together. That's a huge thing for the community later. And we're also doing that. Currently, the only hardware wallet that can do PSBT is uh, code card. And after we develop the PSBT multi-signature, and then we can do a very cool PSBT multi-signature with code card, which will tremendous increase the uh, attacking cost for a hacker because he need to hack two different brands of hardware wallet. That is really cool. And uh, uh, the Bitcoin community is waiting for that so long and we're, we're doing, we're working on that with our full capacity. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, yeah. that's great. Yeah, so I did. Yeah, uh, listen, I'm I'm not technical. That's why you know my philosophy is if I can do it, then others, other people, other average users can do it too. So I mm -hmm. I already had Electrum. I I created a new wallet, you know, with the Cobalt, and I yeah. I didn't use the micro SD card for the for the signing or whatever, you know, the uh, mm -hmm. the check, you know, check uh, sort of and the, the signing. But I did, you know, uh, manage to 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 sign a transaction by you know by uh, uh, scanning these QR codes, you know, uh, via Electrum mm -hmm. and Cobalt, and it you know worked perfectly fine. Now back again because it's really important. Now people who already have, let's say, any kind of Trezor, uh, whatever hardware wallet, let's say Trezor One, a Bitbox, a Trezor mm -hmm. One, or a Ledger, if you want, which I already mentioned, or any any. So you're saying you uh, people can already directly use the hardware wallet together with. Uh, uh, compatibly with with the Cobol vault, is that correct? Or uh, currently, uh, Cobol cannot do multi signature with other mm -hmm. hardware wallets, and hopefully, uh, within July, we will support that. And currently, we are working on that. Currently, what the compatibility level of Cobol is, Cobol can be used with Electron, and also on Cobol side, we support PSBT single signature. So after uh, wallet, after third party wallets like Blue Wallet and uh, BTC Pay server, if they release their uh, the next version of their product, we can work with BTC Pay and Blue Wallet also. So uh, currently the compatibility level for Cobalt Vault is Cobalt Vault can work with some third party software wallets. But if we want to do uh, 
hardware wallet, cross hardware wallet multi signature, we need to wait for the next big release of Cobalt Vault, which will happen within July. Okay, okay. Since you mentioned yep. multi sig, um, um, because that was uh, Stepan Snigger's question, he asked me to ask you that. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. so you, you partially answered it. The question is, uh, his question is, the question is, how is it implemented and when is it triggered? Uh, you know, and um, uh, yeah, is like any other uh, details you want to share? Like, but okay, okay. Well, for the multi signature, I think uh, one thing which is already implemented by uh, Code Card which is really important is that uh, for a hardware wallet uh, on the, I let me think how to describe this less techy. Um, uh, for example, for, um, for Ledger, uh, the way they do multi-signature is that uh, the Ledger, uh, you send me information and I just blindly sign that information which is really dangerous because you are trusting Electrum or you are trusting the software wallet to give you the right information. You don't do too much verification on your side, on the hardware wallet side, which is dangerous. So, which is dangerous for the users because your Electrum is connected to the internet. It can be manipulated by a remote, by a hacker remotely and then send you some wrong information and ask the ledger to sign. So the shortcoming of ledger of doing multisig is it's blindly signing the information sent to ledger. This is dangerous. So uh, currently the best implementation in the industry is code card. So for code card, uh, code card can, you can take that, for example, you use code card and uh, a ledger and a treasure to do a multi-signature. What code card can do is code card can collect information from ledger and the treasure. So on code card, code card can set up a multi-signature. All the code, code card can collect all the multi-signature information and uh, set up the multi-signature on code card side, which means code card has the full information. And when the electron or the software wallet send a unsigned multi-signature transaction into code card because code card has all the information. So code card can verify whether you are sending me some malicious unsigned transaction or you are sending me a legit unsigned transaction. So this verification on code wallet, on hardware wallet side is really important because um, your software wallet cannot be fully trusted it's connected to the internet and the hacker can hack it remotely. So we are implementing the uh, multi-signature, the PSBT multi-signature, just like code card, which is the currently the best practice uh, currently in the market. And uh, also we hope that one day Ledger and the Trezor will implement the same way, which is increasing the security level of multi-signature, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. So, um, yeah, I'm not me... sure. I'm not sure. I'm explaining very well. If you no, no, don't you fully understand, no, you can you... you can ask me. Yeah, great job. No, it just uh, I, I what what really my uh, uh, my wish is is that you know the average user out there who who really doesn't know you know shit mm -hmm. like me like but like technicalities like uh, if we can make like if you know user interface experience is the most important thing to me. But then like really essential security features that just yes. come by default or people don't need to think about it you know the process of yes that would yes. be great so let me just yes. continue with the with some of the most specific questions of stepan Stiginev, um mm -hmm. who's by the way also working on a lot of other you know uh, projects such as uh, spectre desktop and others um, and you know security models um about the ecosystem integration. I know you answered that partially. I'm sorry if I repeat some of the questions. What software wallets are supported? Electrum, Kobo app, uh, plans for green wallet by Blockstream, blue wallet, 
Can Cobra mm -hmm. Wallet be used in multi-signature setup with other hardware wallets? What software supports it? Electrum, do you support partially signed Bitcoin transaction format? And can I sign the PSBT from Bitcoin Core with Cobra Wallet? Sorry if I, there's just too many questions at once, but uh, you have the list mm -hmm. anyway. Do you, do you make, what sense do you make out of the question? Yeah, actually, I, I think I've answered the most of these questions. Mm -hmm. um, first, uh, currently, Cobalt Vault is compatible. Uh, the latest firmware version, Cobalt Vault, is compatible with Electron. And we have a tutorial for how to use Cobalt Vault with Electron. And also, on our side, we have developed the PSBT single signature compatibility with uh, Blue Wallet and also with BTC Pay server, and also we're doing with Wasabi Wallet. Um, so that's for PSBT single signature. As I said uh, here, the PSBT acts like a, uh, acts like a uh, same talking protocol or same language between the software wallet and the hardware wallet side. And also we're working on PSBT multi-signature with, uh, we're working on PSBT multi-signature and hopefully in July, our product can be compatible with code card to do a PSBT multi-signature. And as I said, PSBT multi-signature increase the security for a uh, old way of multi-signature. Uh, yeah, I don't want to dive it too techy into it, but mm -hmm. if you, if the listeners or the audience want to take a conclusion is that a PSBT multi-signature is safer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, also, uh, also, uh, Stepan mentioned uh, Green Wallet, uh, which is made by Block Blockstream. Uh, actually, we're also, if Blockstream can give us the opportunity to make it compatible with Cobalt Vault, we will definitely do that because currently our highest priority is making the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin firmware, Bitcoin only firmware better and better and we're going to make it compatible with other software wallets. And I, one feature I really like, I really like about uh, Blockstream Green Wallet is they can activate the Tor network, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I, I think a very few software wallets have that feature. And personally, I really like this feature. So if they can open a door for us for integration, we'll definitely do that. And it's not hard on our side because I know they also support PSPT and we also support PSPT. So only some UI changes can realize that. And that is also the most uh, uh, charming part of PSPT, which means uh, if you support PSPT and suddenly a lot of third party wallets, you don't need to put into too much effort and then you can talk with them. I mean, you can do the signature on sign and sign the signature. You're talking in the same language with other, yeah. uh, with other wallets in the ecosystem. So yeah, mm -hmm. thankful to PSBT, to BIP 174. Thanks to Andrew Chow. Yeah. It's a amazing thing. Personally, I really love this. <laughs> Fantastic teamwork. Okay. Um, yeah. I had another question, but maybe, maybe I'll come back to that later. Uh, about the, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you have a, uh, what do you call it? Like anti-tampering, uh, system integrated into your, into the Cobo vault. That means if, if somebody yes. tries to disassemble it, it will uh, sort of uh, self-destruct itself or make itself obsolete or, uh, you know, the operation. Yes. So the device level. So the question was from Stefan, like, uh, uh, like, isn't an act, isn't an, like, how does it work precisely? Isn't it an active mesh or temper switch or what happens if, if I detach the battery and then open the yes. device? Yes, uh, actually, uh, actually here, first I want to mention that uh, I want to give to give you guys two side notes of the self-destruct mechanism. Uh, the first side note is that uh, actually self-destruct mechanism is not invented by us. Actually, it's widely adopted by traditional banking systems. Uh, for example, uh, the most ancient self-destruct mechanism is in the ATM machine. So which is the ATM machine you take money from it. So the ATM machine has the most traditional self-destruct mechanism, which is uh, because in the ancient times, a lot of thieves, they just take away the ATM machine and uh, put that and uh, stole that ATM machine into their own like warehouse or in a garage. And then they try to break the ATM machine. 
So for the ATM machine, usually they have the self-destruct mechanism, destruct mechanism, which is very ancient, which is they have a bottle of ink in that machine. And once you falsely open the, the ATM machine, the ink, the bottle of ink or the bag of ink will break. And then all the money will get tanned. So this is the most uh, traditional of self-destruct mechanism. And then nowadays, almost every like uh, credit card terminals and this kind of banking equipment, they have self-destruct mechanism. And we're, we, we didn't invent this. We just took the legacy from those products for the self-destruct mechanism. That's the first side note. The second side note is that currently we are the only hardware wallet in the world that has the self-destruct mechanism. So uh, here I, I jump into the, the logic of it. So the self-destruct mechanism actually, actually the first thing is we have multiple layers of self-destruct destruct mechanism. And we have uh, an article which explains uh, the first layer. The first layer is activated by a battery. So that battery can last around three years. So the mechanism is like, because you can see from our product, if you can show that later, on our product, there's no USB ports. So the most powerful attack for a hardware wallet is side channel attack, which means they do some manipulation or they do some hacking on the circuit board. So because our product doesn't have a uh, USB port, so if a hacker want to do a side channel attack, they, they have to falsely disassemble the product. So we have, we have an article I can share that later. I'm not sure I can share the screen. Is it allowed for yeah, me to yeah, share yeah. the screen? Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. She should okay. be able to. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see my Google page? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let me, let me find that article. Yeah, it's called self-destruction. Mm -hmm. uh, self-destruct mechanism. Oh, yeah, this is, this is the article where it explains the self-destruct mechanism. Uh, here, the article will only explain the first layer. Sorry, my internet is not that good, I think. Uh, there's a very important uh, image here. Just one moment. Sure. Uh, yeah, while it's loading, the, another question was, um, there are two components in Kobo, Android uh, OS. Oh, that sorry. Oh, just one moment. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, just one more. My connection is not good. So actually, there are some connectors between the body, uh, the device body, also the device screen, between the screen and the circuit board. Once it's detachable, once it's detached, and uh, the circuit board can detect uh, some parts of the body was detached, and then all the uh, important information like the private keys and your seed was uh, will be destroyed on the secure element. That's the mechanism of self-destruct mechanism. Uh, and also we have some other layers, but we cannot disclose too much information for other layers because we only, for other layers, it's some, like you can take that as some hidden protection for the side channel attack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know what's wrong with the connection. Yeah, no problem. Sorry. Um, mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, there were some a, a couple of deeper questions. I'm not sure whether we should go into it. Uh, Stefan says, are there any device level and tampering protection mechanism by the you answer, already answered that or they or they only cover the secure element? Uh, a few words about the secure element, which parts of the secure element firmware are open source. You, you talked about that already. There are two components in Kobo, Android OS, that controls the display and the secure element that stores the secrets. Uh, does the secure element verify what is running on the main processor? Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm not sure we want to comment on that. Yeah, actually uh, one important verification 
for the most important verification for the secure element to do is when you are putting into the micro SD card. And if there's a uh, upgrade package in the micro SD card, the secure element will check the uh, if the uh, upgrade package is from the official manufacturer, which is Cobol, or it's a malicious uh, update package. That's the most important thing for the for the secure element to check, because it's almost impossible. It's almost impossible to insert some malicious code into the device because people can check every QR code, and the QR code don't take too much information. So the most likely way of a hacker to try to insert a malicious code into your device is through the micro SD card and through the upgradation process. So secure element do check that. That's the most imp important check for the secure element. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. As you know, uh, like, I'm not a security expert or anything, uh, but um, and uh, what, I've, what I've heard so far is, you know, um, I've, I've re even read an article recently or some kind of review where really Cobo Vault really gets, uh, in, you know, in total in totality, a really a, a super positive review and analysis. Do you guys like, um, or have you already gotten some more expert feedback or independent analysis reviews of, from other yes. such as, you yes. know? Yeah. Yes, uh, actually, uh, first is we are almost finishing our uh, third party code auditing with a uh, we see a very famous uh, security vendor here in China. And uh, the core team is from, uh, I'm not sure you're super, I'm also, personally, I'm also, I'm also not super familiar with the white hat community. Uh, community. And, uh, but the leader of our project is very famous in uh, Android hacking. So yeah, uh, actually we were talking about, we may release that report which is code auditing report later. And then you will see uh, we have fixed uh, some of very critical bugs, which is found by them. And also uh, some we call it informative bugs. It's okay, it's not that techy, but uh, in order to protect some user experience, we didn't fix that. So you guys can see that report later. We're going to open source that report also. But all the, all the uh, medium and the critical above medium and above informative bugs are fixed by us. So that's the first thing we do. Uh, and also recently we send uh, another device to, uh, I'm not sure I can mention his name, but he's really famous in uh, hardware wallet security. And uh, he has uh, disclosed some very famous uh, security issues by, for other hardware wallets. We also send a device to him and we disabled the self-destruct mechanism for him to try to hack the product. And actually he gave us very two important feedbacks for the security side. And we're working on that. And with the next uh, release of the firmware, we will also fix that problem. So that's the two things we have done. Yeah, but I think uh, also, as we have open sourced the firmware of the secure element, and also we have open sourced, the, we have partially open sourced the Android system, and also we have open sourced the Android application. I think everyone can go to our GitHub and try to find some vulnerabilities there. And uh, later, we will also do another round of security auditing, which is auditing the hardware part, which is the circuit board. So for that part, uh, but you know that this kind of security auditing, it's not a one shot. It's like you are doing that progressively part by part. So we will do that also. And then later, if we finish that, we'll also share information for that. Yeah. And Lexian, you know, um, as I mentioned in the beginning, I mean, you guys um, also step on Stiginev, uh, he gave you a really great uh, comment, uh, a great, great compliments and feedback. And he said, you ha you guys have really the potential, not only because of your disposition of being open minded to constructive criticism from the community and building up this, you know, building and, and you know, improving whatever the features, the functions, uh, fixing bugs or improving any kind of, 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 of potential flaws. Uh, uh, that you know any hardware wallet, any hardware device can have, 
Um, what I was gonna say is that, um, yeah, and you guys, you know, have the potential. Kobo has the potential to become. Uh, 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 I guess you know I can say that because it's really positive. Uh, Kobo has the potential to become one of the top five uh, air-gapped hardware wallets eventually. So um, yeah, uh, before we wrap up, Alexin, do you have like any other uh, you know important uh, information, or you want to direct my listeners and viewers to uh, to your website or uh, a Twitter handle, what have you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, for those links for our website and uh, for the official Twitter account and also my personal Twitter account, uh, I can maybe we can share that in the description later. Yeah. Uh, and uh, here, what I what I want to mention, maybe you have uh, mentioned that several times. What I want to mention is that uh, we just the first is actually a advice. Uh, actually, one of my part a piece of my advice, which is. Uh, I just mentioned some very techy words like PSBT and uh, like uh, air gap and uh, like other stuff. Uh, I think if you are fully responsible for your Bitcoin and you want to really do well on the uh, security and uh, safely do your hodling, I think everyone should do their research by themselves because um, Howard wallet is only part of the security it's only part of the security. It doesn't mean that if you buy a hardware wallet and it solves every problem. So every hardware wallet has its problem. And even for us, I can't deny that uh, if you use Cobo Vault app, it may have some privacy issues because we know some of your information. So what you have to do is you need to do some research and uh, you need to know that how to avoid some shortcomings of some hardware wallets and uh, for example, for Kobo Vault, uh, what I cannot deny is that uh, the QR code scanning takes a little bit longer than yeah. if you want to That's sign a transaction yeah. with yeah. Ledger. Yeah, yeah. you, you can tell issues. that. <laughs> After multiple yeah, yeah, times. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, for the scanning QR code, it, I cannot deny that it's not as easy as, uh, uh, convenience wise, it's not as easy as connecting your hardware wallet to your laptop. So you should know uh, you should know more about the knowledge and uh, think about whether you need this kind of strong air gap for your Bitcoin. And also you need to know in your security model, do you need multi-signature? And also this is only the hardware part. You also need to learn how to protect your rec recovery seed. That's also extremely important because if you lose your recovery seed, you lose everything, no matter how strong your hardware wallet is, no matter how strong your multi-sig is. So I think that's the first advice for all the listeners. You have to do your research and you have to know better about, um, it's like, um, it's like uh, I mentioned this theory in one of, the, one of my article, which is the, the bucket theory, which is how much water you can hold in your bucket is decided by the shortest piece of the wood of the bucket. So you should know where is your shortest uh, mm -hmm. piece of wood and you need to improve that. That's really important. So know your bucket and then you know where is the weakest point of your Bitcoin security. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. It, may, it, may sound, it may sound very hard or it may sound very, um, maybe it's, a little bit troublesome for some users, uh, but I strongly suggest uh, everyone, if you do self custody, you'd better do some research. That's my first advice. And uh, the second thing I wanted to share to the to your followers and your listeners is that uh, if you buy Cobalt, I want to say thank you, and also our team, especially me and our developers, our the whole team has super open ears. And uh, we really wanted to build a good product for the community. And there are product, hardware wallet products, but in our eyes, um, there are some like little issues and we really wanted to improve this stuff. So if you have suggestions for our product, uh, just let us know and we'll try our best to, to fix problems and to give you guys the features you want and also make this product better and better. This is our mindset. So. Mm, yeah, the whole team, our team is not defensive 
for constructive ideas or constructive suggestions, we have super open ears for that. Just let us know and you can find us with support at Kobo.com or you can find us on uh, Twitter or Telegram group, anything. Yeah, Alexin, and you know, uh, I, um, uh, I, uh, you know, as I always say, trust uh, is the essence of every relationship and communication. Yes. And, you yes. know, it creates trust and transparency. And I think that's what people need. And also some kind of instant, relatively instantaneous communication and feedback and uh, like people having the feeling that they're being helped and supported and really educated on, you know, and not not like, you know, here's your product and just, you know, whatever, do what, mm -hmm. because, you know, it's it's not only COBA, there's all these issues that arise, whatever, whether it be this Q, uh, QR scan coding or, you know, uh, code scanning or whatever, you know, detailed problems that arise, it's not all exclusively COBO's uh, issue. You know, there's other... Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, issues with with other hardware wallets or applications or uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. connecting it to, uh, to 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 a node like all these little details. So um, so yeah, thank you so much, uh, Lixin. We're gonna keep up this conversation. Maybe maybe even yeah. in the future, I'd love to have like a panel discussion and maybe you really. Uh, uh, but let me ask you uh, before we wrap up. Uh, you know, uh, Casa mm -hmm. has this multi-signature. Uh, um, uh, feature that you know you yes. you have uh, and it's seedless this is what they pride themselves uh, on is that it's seedless you people don't actually need the seeds that's why you have sort of two out of three for example because i think that's yes. the the basic or the cheapest packages or pa package the mm -hmm. gold package so is that something you're you're striving for you're gonna or you're going is that on the roadmap so like having a seedless um a bitcoin hodling procedure you know without okay. having okay else. okay um yeah you you just asked a very 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 good question um actually uh from my perspective maybe my understanding is wrong but from my perspective uh first they achieve seedless uh is that they don't need the seed because they first they set up a multi-signature so which means uh, for example, you set up a two slash three multi signature, which means if one of your hardware wallet is broken, you still have two hardware wallets or you still have two devices to sign a transaction and you can send out, you can save your money to, you can save your Bitcoin and send it to elsewhere. So they have the confidence of the seed list. The first is based on they set up the multi signature. Uh, the second thing, which is also super important, which may be ignored by people, is that they have a health check mechanism. So, for example, if if I do a seedless multi-signature, I can do a seedless multi-signature by myself. I can make, buy three hardware words, but I need to check the functionality of these three hardware words like once several weeks because if I don't check that, if I check there two years later, and suddenly I found that of the three hardware wallets and two of them doesn't work, only one can work. But the multi-signature is two slash three multi-signature, which means at least you need two hardware wallets. And at this time, you don't have the seed, and also you only have one hardware wallet which, which is functioning properly, and then you, you lose all your Bitcoin. So. I think their seed list is based on two things. One is multi-signature. The other is a strong mechanism for health check. You have to, actually, I'm not a, uh, I didn't buy their uh, service. Uh, I guess from their blocks and from their materials, I guess uh, they have like customer service or they have a customer manager, manager who will remind you like once a week or once two weeks for health check your hardware wallets that's also very important so again it jump back to my point uh if you adopt one solution you need to know the shortcoming of this solution if you do casas seedless by yourself not only just set up the multi-signature but you need to set up a alert or an alarm for yourself like once a week or once two weeks to do the self check, uh, to do to do the health check for your hardware wallets. That's really important. 
So again, for CASA service, I think that's only uh, that's another uh, approach for security. And also, uh, I, I read some materials from them. I think they have done very good. They have making a very good product. And especially uh, just like yours, just like you said, multi-signature has some kind of uh, adoption curve for a normal user. Uh, people may don't understand and people may mess around with those uh, XPUB or those uh, addresses or change addresses, this kind of thing. And people, it's not easy for everyone to understand the shortcomings of ledgers blindly signing. So I think from this perspe perspective, CASA is doing very great on promoting the multi-signature mechanism, but it also comes with price. But I think that price really worth uh, their service. And uh, to protect your Bitcoin, I think it's worth investing. But if you have more knowledge and uh, you can do multi-sig by yourself and you can decide your multi-sig is seedless or not seedless, which depends on whether you have a good uh, habit to do the health check for your hardware wallet. Yeah. yeah, the thing is, I mean, we, we cannot save the users or, you know, the, the average really normal use out there from a minimum degree of, of, of self-responsible learning and education curve, as you said. And yep. again, I remember a talk in the very beginning in with Giacomo and he said, you know, it's again about trade-offs, you know, like you got to, yeah, trade -offs. Uh, you know, security private and more, of course, you, you know, you understand, you're more paranoid you become, which is necessary. You need a minimum of paranoia than, than necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you're not going to, you know, take care of those issues or, or, or questions uh, when it comes yes. to your very, you know, very essential security and, and privacy. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, uh, Lexi, thanks so much. Uh, is there anything else like uh, 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 you, we can find you on Twitter, on uh, the yep. website, uh, your, yep. your personal one, and the website is kobo.com. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. And uh, uh, happy to join you here and happy to share my understanding of security and uh, my knowledge about hardware wallets. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy your experience with couple of out and you if you have questions or suggestions just let me know thanks so much Lixin. talk to you soon all right thank you thank you Take too care. thank you so bye much bye. yeah bye bye all right that was really interesting Lixin leo the creator of the kobo vault uh air gapped kobo vault hardware wallet um and you should definitely check it out check it out um, make sure you follow him and uh, check out their, their website, kobo.com. Uh, kobo uh, let me know if you have any, any other questions or feedback uh, and uh, also for the future, uh, if we should, you know, dive deeper into the rabbit hole. And yeah, it's all about, you know, learning, education and, and making those trade-offs. Uh, it's not easy, but I'm, I would really, my intention, my wish is to make it as easy and smooth and user-friendly as possible and understandable as possible for the uh, truly average, you know, uh, noob and Bitcoin user out there. So thank you so much. Give me a like, retweet, reshare, uh, a positive review on Apple Podcasts, any other podcast platform, subscribe on my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com, uh, Kevin Davani or The Total Connector. And I'm the host of the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show and the Total Connector Show. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon again.